Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, Monday Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. God bless you. Good night. That is the wrap up. Um, if you traded today, uh, if you actively looked at the market, um, not sure what was going on today. Okay, I, I tried to figure it out. Maybe it was some sort of weird holiday. Uh, maybe the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange uh, close early. Maybe you know our friends in Armenia was were putting money into the market. So whatever it was, the market did absolutely nothing today. Uh, if you look at the tape, uh, there was you know about a two hundred point uh, gap up today in the Nasdaq. Um, and when, when you look at the market, when the market gapped up two hundred points, all I kept on saying is there's nothing to buy. There's nothing to buy. There's literally nothing to buy. Everything, everything's stuck in the middle of the ranges because when we sold off last Friday, it engulfed the previous day. So when we get gap back up today, it was a scenario of well, how could you know how can you go long? Stocks are not even at the top of the range here. They're still stuck in the middle. And you know what that happened was you know basically an hour later, we sold off a little bit, and literally for the next four or five hours, we did nothing. It was like a flat line. Um, it, it looked like a, like a patient that was about to go flatline into the afterlife. Just absolutely nothing going on. And when you look at uh, when you look at this consolidation, you turn around and say, "Well, this is so healthy, right? This is so good." And again, if you've you, if you've watched any you know literally anything uh, that I've ever done, you know you kind of you know you kind of know my, my my theory. The longer a stock or ETF or anything kind of sits in a range, the higher probability it's gonna bust out of that range and go very, very aggressively. Well, this is already one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Tomorrow will be day seven. So we're nearly, we're a, a, a week and a half after the NASDAQ reclaimed the 20 day moving average, the previous, not the last Friday, but the previous Friday. And that's cool and all, but the thing is, once it has the ability to actually go higher, like it did uh, this day on the reversal of the Microsoft pre-announcement, the next two, two days it puts in an inside day, and, and not only that, it gives it, it gives uh, it gives uh, the gains back. So we're sitting here, we're sitting here, we're trying to digest this information. You're saying to yourself, well, the longer it can't rally, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And and here was the question I kind of asked. Okay, was and this is the funny thing about it is. Was today, right, was today an inside day, because the NASDAQ was up 50 points, the NASDAQ on Friday, uh, last Friday was down 300. So my question was, and I'm trying to wrap my brain around this, was today an inside day of last Friday, or was last week an inside day of the buying that happened the previous week when we're up 6.8%? I don't care how you spin it, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. The point is we're still stuck in this range. And when you go through your charts tonight, you'll notice the same thing. There's definitely setups, but the problem is nothing wants to confirm. Not only that nothing wants to confirm, I basically, this was by far, by far, I'm talking about by far, that wasn't even, not even in second place. This is by far the, the slowest day I've had in 2022, I put on one trade. It was a bounce off of a rising 60 minute support of Amazon, which by the way, split today. Um, you know, it traded 134 million shares today. Um, you know, I said to myself, I'm gonna watch this thing for the next two, three days, just to kind of get a personality of this thing. Cause obviously Amazon at 125 is a lot different than Amazon at 2400. So we have to kind of digest the way it trades, find this true personality find this real average true range. And I, and I don't expect 134 million shares being traded tomorrow on it. Um, you know, I think it's probably going to flatline somewhere around 30, 40 million shares, maybe 50 million shares for the day. But I'd like to, I, so far I kind of like the way it's trading. It was trading basically within a couple of penny spread. Uh, at first it reminded me a little bit about Apple, but then I said, it, it's kind of trades smoother. And, you know, no matter how Apple trades, I like the way Amazon was trading. It was trading a little smoother. For all you guys who took uh, the bounce in Amazon, you kind of know, it kind of hit the range, paused there for a second, started bouncing up with, with very little resistance. So that was kind of cool. Uh, you had the, the Apple presenting at some sort of event. Uh, they, they, you know, they had some cool, you know, cool things about this edit button. 
Uh, again, for all you guys who are alcoholics at three o'clock in the morning, text your ex-girlfriend or text your boyfriend and go, I love you so much. How can you leave me? Right? You could actually edit that and you don't have to send it. You can actually take that away. So that was kind of cool. But other than that, not really a lot of movement, right? It, you know, got rejected up to five day moving average. Uh, everything basically that we talked about on the weekend video is still, you know, still valid for tomorrow. You know, Tesla really didn't do anything today. Nothing, you know, nothing extraordinary. Think about this. You know, Tesla was down 79 points on Friday. The stock was up, what, 11? Not really exactly. So, so this setup is still in play. The Apple setup is still in play, right? It didn't really come out with any earth shattering news except for the edit button. Um, I still like it, you know, if it starts dro dropping below the 10 day moving average square that we talked about, it, it's getting tighter and tighter. I still like it if it starts confirming, um, you know, so everything that we talked about basically on the weekend update is still valid for tomorrow. It's very, very, you know, it's very, very rare that the market does goes out of its way to do absolutely nothing. Now, somebody turned around and say, well, Dan, is this summer trading? I mean, look, we're at what, June 6th? This is, I, I can't imagine this is summer trading because last week was still kind of end of May, June. Um, I, I don't buy it because especially the stocks that we trade, it, it has majority of so much average to range. Even if you have a slower day, you'll have a range at some point. But today was just very, very odd. You had semiconductors that didn't participate. Uh, NVIDIA, nothing. Like again, still going sideways. You had AMD getting rejected again at the top of the channel here. Uh, Google that splits, I think soon, you know, kind of like, you know, had a nice pop, got rejected, not here nor there. Um, so we're just kind of sitting here, right? It was just a very, very odd day. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow we kind of get back to business, right? I don't care at this point. I don't care which way we break. Just break, right? Break. I don't care how long uh, this even takes, but as long as we sit, and this is kind of the most important part, the longer we sit above 303, the common sense would say, look, we're going to start moving higher. The, once we start breaking below 303, then we go 100% sell bias, but something has to give. Also, a name like AFRM was a little bit of a victim to uh to the uh am uh, to the apple conference apple is starting their own uh you know pay uh, pay later by now kind of like this thing for tomorrow you know this thing is sitting in a tight range but then again everything's sitting in a tight range right any stock you want is sitting in a tight range so i can't really say i like this one more than that one something got to break right and that's the whole point that's what we talk about discipline this is what we talk about just because the market's open doesn't mean that things are tradable every stock moves right every stock moves it's the market's open from 9 30 the ecn's open up at four o'clock in the morning everything moves but today nothing was absolutely tradable for the exception of amazon and this is another very very important point which was made the made the, the day a little more odder there was no option flow today like zero there was really no uh nothing for the exception of amazon you know they were driving the 25s the 30s the 36s out of the monies but there was nothing else i was i was sitting there and i go there's no out of the money on teslas there's no out of the money there was a little bit uh the 200s came in from the video early early right at the open but nothing after that so it was a very very odd day uh, one of those days that you turn around and go, okay, now it's over. Okay, uh, you make your watch list for the next day. And again, there's some things I like. There's definitely some things I like. Like I said, I like a firm tomorrow. If it's if it finally breaks down below this range, I like Square tomorrow. If it breaks below this range, I like Tesla tomorrow. Right? If it breaks below this range, you, you know, basically the same thing, right? Apple. If it breaks down below this range, the upside. Look at Lenar. Right, you got a home builder that's getting uh, super duper tight. Let me see what else I like here. Uh, Marvel, I like. I kind of like Marvel, but yeah, look, we, we don't even know which way the market's going to break tomorrow. Marvel is going tight. Um, and check out this. Uh, check out BBBY. Right, BBBY also it gapped up, got got stuck. Right now, it's on its ten day moving average. They pull the market. Let's keep an eye on this thing on the bottom of the range. But the, the, now it just becomes a, a, a it becomes a waiting game. Right, it, it's all about. Uh, the game of chicken, you versus you. It's not you versus the market, it's you versus you. It's basically asking yourself, how many C, D, E, and F setups can you take the, that it's gonna finally churn your account to the point that you say, take away the damn mouse, I don't wanna trade, right? And that's the whole point. It's not about the FOMO, the fear of missing out, it's about the JOMO, the joy of missing out. And what exactly are you missing out of today? Today, I, I asked people uh, in the webinar when the market was really going sideways, I'm like, show me a symbol 
that you want to own today when the market was up 200 points. It was crickets. It was absolute crickets because there was not enough, there was not enough range in anything. And once the market started selling off, they were like, okay, here comes the bottom ranges that never came. So the moral of the story is what came first, the chicken or the egg, nobody cares. Something confirmed, up, down, we don't care. At this point, we are open to everything. And the most important point is wait it out. Eventually the, vol uh, the volume will, uh, will get very aggressive. Eventually the option flow will come back, hopefully tomorrow. And hopefully the ranges finally expand, whether it's the downside to the upside. But once they do, we should get some very, very aggressive moves back in that direction. So that's it, you're right, that's it. Sometimes, you know, it's very, very tough. When you, know, when you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig, you can't spin this. So it was a very quiet day, and the most important part is it's over. Now we concentrate on tomorrow, wait patiently again for everything to confirm, and the most important part, like we say every single day, premium hands only, stay in business. Guys, God bless, hope everybody is still awake, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.